Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, welcome back to this little corner of the internet. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so 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 happy that you stumbled up on in here and I really hope that you're going to decide to stay. But if you've clicked on this video today it's because you want to know how I study anatomy. You probably are interested in my anatomy workflow and that is totally totally valid. So let's talk about this for a second, more than a second. <laughs> and as always, down below there's going to be timestamps of all of the different things that we're going to be talking about today. So if you want to jump around, you can definitely do that. All of the timestamps are down below. So yeah, let's start with the first section of this video, which is going to be about the background information that I think is really important for you guys to know. So the first thing that is important to mention is if you don't know me, I am a second year medical student. So I have been doing anatomy for a year and a bit. And I really took the time, especially last year, to fine tune my technique, fine tune my workflow and really make sure that this workflow works for me. And with that said, it really brings me to the disclaimer of this video is that this is the workflow that I personally use. I don't expect you guys to copy this workflow because it might not work for you guys. I am more doing this video for people to fine tune their own, hopefully get ideas. You might see something in this video that you really resonate with and you really think that it would work for, for your lifestyle and for your study routine. And that's basically the purpose of this is to hopefully help you guys fine tune your own routine but by no means am I expecting you to fully copy this and by no means am I saying that my routine is the best one out there it definitely probably is not it's probably just the best one for me yeah <laughs> and every single medical student has to find the perfect routine for them as well and they're all different another thing that needs to be mentioned i think is that i am in a pbl medical school so pbl cases are released weekly and with that we also have the anatomy associated anatomy for the case that's published so this week the anatomy is cranial nerves and the brainstem so it's a massive massive topic and when the anatomy is published they also publish with it the suggested pre-reading to do so that's pre-reading done in textbooks However, if you've seen my video about anatomy resources that I strongly, strongly suggest you guys watch if you want to know more anatomy resources and know what I personally use to use and to learn anatomy, I'll leave you the video in the eye, which is here or here, or anyways, it'll be in the description. You probably understood from this video that I am not a massive user of textbooks. I don't love textbooks. I much prefer watching YouTube videos. And so that's basically how I do my pre-reading most of the times. I watch a YouTube video. At times I might then do the pre-reading just really quickly just to skim through and see that I haven't missed anything. Or alternatively, I might just skim through the pre-reading first just to see everything that needs to be known. And then I'll look on YouTube to find videos that cater to those different topics. Um, but that's the way I do pre-reading. And another thing that's important to mention before we start this video is that the way we do anatomy in our medical school is that there's obviously the pre-reading first then we have a zoom session with a zoom tutor with an anatomy tutor sorry that asks us questions so they can kind of quiz us but they can also answer our questions and re-explain certain concepts that are quite difficult to grasp and then by the end of the week we also have a dissection session where we can go to the dissecting room and properly see models so it's kind of the time where we're able to translate everything that we've done in 2D to a 3D model. Again, we have we have to answer questions there and we can also ask our own questions. So basically every single step that we do is consolidating on the information that we have learned just previously. So right now I am currently in phase one, which is the pre-reading or pre-videoing in my workflow. And yeah, that's basically all of the different things that I think are important to know. We can now move on to the second section, which is basically how I personally take anatomy notes. So how do I watch a YouTube video and then take notes from that? Do I take it on an iPad, on a computer, all of that? We're gonna be talking about it really, really shortly. But before we do that, I need to jump really, really quickly to the shop and buy some food. And also I just need a break because I've been looking at videos about cranial nerves for way too long. So I'll see you guys in a second for you, in probably half an hour for me, but yeah. Okay, came back and it's snack time, and then, and then we'll talk about the facial nerve, promise. Okay, so I finally, finally finished eating and came back, it's now 7 p.m., goodness, I still have five videos to watch. It'll all be fine. And I have set up the whole thing, so Ninja Nerd is in my ear right now. So, let's start. The thing that I always do first is I write the title, so I write, this is the facial nerve, so 
And as the, um, you've probably seen on the, my video about all the anatomy resources, there's so many different YouTube like channels that exist that I often just write on the side which video it comes from. So here I'm writing Ninja Nerd so I know that if I ever don't understand what I wrote, I can always just refer back to the video. So that's the first thing I do. I'm not going to start the video and just walk you guys through how I'm going to do it. So let's go. Okay, so he just said that the video was going to be structured in four different parts. So the origin of the nerve, the course of the nerve, the structures that the nerve supplies, and then some cor clinical correlation. And so these three parts basically are like the headings. So I'm going to start off with the origins of the nerve. So I just do it with the same sort of structure as the title, just that I write it in white. So origin... And then literally it's gonna be some freestyle from there. So he just said that it's interesting because the cranial, the facial nerve has many different nuclei within the brainstem that make up the facial nerve. So that we're gonna talk about all of them, but we're gonna start with the motor thing. So the fact that he said that that's interesting, I'm just gonna write on the margin here, like note being like uh, facial nerve has many different nuclei in the brainstem. Uh, oops. And then as I'm going to figure out what they are, I'm just going to add it. So he just start, started talking about motor. So we're going to start with motor. So I know that there's motor. Then when there's probably going to be sensory. So I'll add sensory. Stuff like that. And then now I'm going to do the whole origin things. I'm going to like speed through this. One next to motor nucleus because this is the first nuclei that he's talking about but there's like four of them so motor nucleus and he also said that this is within the pond so I'm just writing that to remember that it's in the ponds basically I'm gonna pause right now just to explain what I've been doing so he's been talking about how the fibers of the facial nucleus gets out of the brainstem and, you know, into like the periphery. And so that's literally what I've been writing. So it moves around the abducens nucleus uh, to the fourth ventricle. And then by moving it backwards, it makes the facial colliculus around the fourth ventricle. And then it continues moving straight to the pontomedullary junction laterally to the cranial nerve 6. So pontomedullary, it's such, such a long word, I just wrote pontomed because I know that med means med medulla. And then he's been talking about what sort of nerve fibers um, mo the motor nucleus has and they are special visceral efferent fibers, so that's literally what I've just been written writing here. Uh, just coming off of the main point, which is that we're talking about the motor nucleus now. And then he just added some specific, some specification to the special visceral efferent, and he said that that supplies the second pharyngeal arches. So I wrote that coming off of special visceral um, efferent. I don't know if it makes sense, but basically it's kind of like I'm writing notes as if I was writing like normally, like just making notes like just the standard way. But actually, it's kind of I'm doing a mind map as well because. Right now, the main point that I'm talking about is motor nucleus and like the arrows are coming off of it. So the first arrow would be this one and the second arrow would be this one. And then out of off of this, there's this arrow that comes off and then off of this, there's this arrow that comes off, which is basically kind of a mind map. So that's basically how I do my notes. I just take the information from the video and make a mind map and try to link all the information together. But also the other thing is color doesn't mean that much right now. I just wanted to emphasize that it was a special visceral efferent. So I just highlighted it in yellow. But like, for example, here, every time like I write in a different color, it's just because I want it to stand out. And I just basically take the first color that comes to mind. And if I've already used orange, I'm going to use another one. So for example, here, I use like some yellow, I use some yellow, I use some red and some, you know, orange, but nothing is linked. It's just because I want it to stand out for different reasons um, and I don't want it to be all white because these are like important factors that need to be like mentioned. For example, here you can see that it's really looks, it really, really looks like a like a mind map. But if you go up here, it's not as clear that it's a mind map, but it is still the mind map feel. Even here you can kind of see it like this is the main point. Then there's three different things that branch off of this and then off of the third one, this thing mucus there's like this that branches off then this one has three different things that branch off of it each of these has two different things that branch off and then 
all of this is important um, and like is related to these two things. So that's kind of how I make my notes. I know it's a bit unclear and I'm not sure if it makes sense. So I'm just going to be continuing doing the facial nerve part of it and I'll meet you guys after. But yeah, that's basically how I make notes. And then the next question, the next section of this video is basically why do I take notes? Because if you watch a lot of like medical school videos, you probably like are realizing that there's kind of like a sore of people saying like, I go to medical school and I take zero notes and and these videos get quite a lot of views because obviously it's like quite like how how do you do that how do you go to medical school and learn your content without taking notes and so i guess that a good question would be why do i take notes so i take notes with a very specific aim in mind the notes i'm taking is for me to understand the content it's not for them to be pretty it's not for them to be used primarily as a revision tool it's mostly there for me to understand the content link the content and just make things make sense in my mind so that means that afterwards when I am revising or when I forgot something I can obviously go back to my notes and try to make it make sense but sometimes it is a bit complicated because obviously there's errors everywhere and if I look at this like in five months I might be like what, what did I mean you know but they are there for obviously a support for revision and trying to remember what was going on but mostly the main aim of the notes I take is to understand the content as I've said also I can't not take any notes in PBL because I need to be able to have something written down so I can like remember the content and then bring that content to PBL close and then participate in discussions. So that's literally the only reason why I take notes. It's not there for me to revise because we'll talk about revision later on, but I revise using Anki. I don't revise using my notes. So literally the notes are just there for me to understand the content. I also don't know about you, but when I write things down, things sink better in my mind. So that's also a reason why if I would just sit there and watch the video, nothing would really stick with me. And then I think the last thing I'm going to talk about today before I'm going to call it a day and I'll just see you probably tomorrow is how do I prep for the Zoom tutorial? So the Zoom meeting with an anatomy tutor. And basically I just do that. I do all of the notes. And since I really take the time to make every everything linked together to make everything make sense. Usually when I get to the Zoom, everything is kind of fresh, things make sense, and I'm able to answer questions. So that's usually literally what I do. If, for example, I've done anatomy and I was really good one week and I've done the anatomy on the Saturday, which never really happens, and by the time my Zoom comes on Thursday, I just don't remember anything, I will either refer back to my notes or watch like shorter like summary videos on YouTube about let's say all of the cranial nerves so I get like a brief over overview and it kind of helps me remember what I learned more in detail before. But that's literally usually just what I do before the tutorial. I literally just do the pre-reading my way. And then after the Zoom, if there's some things that I think I need to review more, I will review that before the dissection room. So yeah, that's the first few parts of the video. Starting cranial nerve 12 now, the last one that I have to do. Also, just a quick thing while we're continuing this video, I wanted to share with you guys something that I do at times. It's not something that's always, that I always do it because I do it whenever, like ad hoc, if I find the need to do it. But remember, in the again, the video about uh, the resources of anatomy. I uh, talk about an app, which is the clinical anatomy app. So that's basically an app where you can see uh, like the human body, like in a very virtual way. So sometimes when I have problems with visualizing things, because I feel that I'm usually quite good in understanding spatially in 2D where things are located within the body. But whenever I feel like I would benefit from something more, I just go on clinical anatomy and just really try to get it. Okay, so I basically found this little um, diagram here in clinical anatomy, and that's definitely gonna be very useful if I ever am confused by where the cranial nerves are going out from the base of the brain, or if I just have to re-look and just re-understand. So there's all of the cranial nerves here, and basically with this, I can very easily click on this and then see that that is the cranial. So if you see this part, the this one, the, the, oh, I can't like show, but basically the upper line here is the, cra the, the brain one, the cranial part of it. And then the one going down, I think that would be the spinal 
because that kind of takes from the cervical and you can definitely see that this is at the bottom here the spinal cord so that are like the two different aspects of it and then they both go they create the pharyngeal plexus and all that and i'll go through jugular foramen okay guys so i'm just interrupting the video really quickly because i'm editing the video currently and i don't feel like i've explained the previous part well enough but basically the cranial and the spinal aspects are of the accessory nerve because the accessory nerve has two different origins and so there's the origins from the spinal so from the spine and then an origin from the brainstem. and these are the two different things that i was trying to show you with the pink lines so yeah so at times, if I'm confused, I will use clinical anatomy and that's why I find clinical anatomy extremely, extremely useful because it allows me to visualize things in 3D before going to the dissecting room. Yeah, and sometimes in the dissecting room, we can't fully see everything we want to see and clinical anatomy, you can. So that's another thing that I use. Okay guys, so I literally finished like 10 minutes ago the anatomy zoom which was the, you know, the second part of like the whole anatomy week. So that's done. That session was actually really good. Uh, it clarified a lot of questions on the different modalities of the cranial nerves and all of that. So that's done. Yeah, that's literally it. That's what happens when I have these sorts of Zoom sessions. I did the pre-reading before, then you answer the questions and you can ask questions and you listen to what the tutor has to say to clarify a lot of things. So for example, today, the things that were clarified the most were the different modalities of the cranial nerves, because that's a very difficult concept to grasp. So yeah, that's what we did today. And then tomorrow I'll have the dissection room. So we're basically in phase two of my anatomy week right now. And I feel that I was able to answer questions quite well, so I don't have to do anything else on my pre-reading that I think would be really necessary. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to do the DR. Hey guys, it's currently raining <laughs> and it's so cold, it's like five degrees. I'm going to anatomy, to the dissection room. Um, I just took my phone right now because I was doing some work this morning and realized that at, I didn't do this today but I realized that at times when I'm going to the dissection room and I feel like I still need to do a bit more work to fully understand and grasp certain concepts I watched the Acklands videos just before the DR so then I kind of know what I'm looking for however this week I really feel like I've understood quite well the anatomy and I didn't feel the need to visualize it even better so I didn't do that but that is certainly something that I do. I did it consistently last year, less consistently this year, but it's definitely something that's always on the back of my mind. If I need to see and visualize the structures before going to the DR, I will definitely do that. And if you've watched my day in the life video that I'm gonna put just up there, I did do that that Thursday when I had anatomy last year. So it is something that I've been doing consistently last year. So yeah, I'm not going into anatomy and I'll see you guys later for like the closing. Um, of this video. Okay guys, so it's currently Saturday. The last clip I filmed, I was going to anatomy. Anatomy was really, really good. I do feel that I need to watch the Aplin videos now, like before my next week anatomy, to fully understand better and like consolidate some of my knowledge. So that is also something that at times I do in my workflow, which is to like watch the Aplin videos afterwards. It's basically like my workflow is quite fluid. I think that's the whole point of this video. but. There's like basic principles that I apply all the time and then based on what my needs are, I like adapt it. So sometimes I watch the Ackland before, sometimes I watch the Ackland after dissection, sometimes I don't watch it at all. So it really, really depends. And then the last section of this video was going to be how do I properly like actually revise anatomy for exams. The way I revise anatomy for exams is with Anki. I don't do my own Anki flashcards. Again, in the video about resources about anatomy, I talk in quite a lot of details about the Anki decks that I use, the pre-made ones, so I use those. I unsuspend the cards that I need, put them into my own decks and like name, title the decks with whatever I want and then I just use that to revise my anatomy. So that's basically the way I revise anatomy, that's literally it. So I make notes to fully understand the concepts and help myself consolidate the knowledge and then to actually learn and remember it, I use Anki. So yeah, that's basically my workflow. If you have any questions, please send me a DM on Instagram or like leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. I am now extremely, extremely exhausted. The video that you're currently watching is not even halfway edited and it's Saturday and it has to be posted tomorrow and I'm so tired, but it's only 10 p.m. and 9.30 p.m. So I'm just gonna go to bed right now. It's very rare. Um, sleep, wake up quite early, finish the editing of the video and have it posted tomorrow because that is my goal, one video every Sunday. And yeah, without further ado, I'm literally gonna brush my teeth, that's why I'm in the bathroom. 
and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well. And yeah, I'm exhausted, I'm gonna go to bed, and I'll see you guys next week.